All right. Hey, welcome everyone. So welcome to another edition of my community brain dump session. This is my behind the scenes look at how I built the script and how I pretty much build the show, put the show together. Um, this is a place where I've decided that I will start responding to questions and comments from people. I get a lot of people who direct message me with with comments, but they're not posting them yet. So I've decided to use this as a place to basically uh, build a little bit more information on the show itself, um, how I'm doing with the show. I want to be pretty transparent and honest. You know, there's a lot of people. What's up, Rob and Leah? Uh, there's a lot of people that, you know, I've been doing a lot of homework and watching how people put their shows together and how people do the work for building out a YouTube channel. And I'm going to tell you right now, um, unless you're doing something like jumping off a roof of a building or you've got some really interesting topic, which would be like gaming and stuff, it's really, really difficult. And I've been having lots of conversations with people and I felt like, well, I got some really good feedback this week. Uh, somebody gave me some, uh, what's up, Dan, supporting your hat, brother. Um, to all, all the people out there at Dapper Dan's. Um, um, so pretty much, I got some pretty good feedback this week. I, I reached out to a few people to get some feedback on how I'm doing on the Monday night edition of this whole iTutor math uh, show thing that I'm doing on Thursdays. And pretty much uh, the advice I was given is just try to standardize the Monday night a little, a little bit. Even though I'm trying to be free flow on Mondays, I want this to be open for people to pretty much talk about whatever they want. I see you too, Dan. Um, I want this to be a forum where people can engage with me because I've got some pretty good numbers. So in full transparency and to be completely honest with the progression of what I'm doing on this show, um, I'm going to share some information with you. Some of it's a little accolades. I'm pretty proud of it. My son's pretty proud of it. The, the, my students that helped me out are pretty proud. So, uh, so I'll start with the, with the honest low number first, okay? So the honest low number is last week's show, last Thursday night's show, which was Fundamentals Part 1, right? I'm doing a, a multi-part series explaining to parents what are the things that my child should know how to do if I was just to baseline them and say, hey, I need to start helping them with something. Last Thursday's show, for whatever reason, got more views on Thursday than I have the previous three shows on Thursday night. So that's a pretty big win for me. Even though if you go look on YouTube, my, my view count is really low. So just to be honest, last Thursday's show had a total of like 43 views. That's not a lot of views. But again, it's really hard to build that fan base starting from scratch on YouTube. Even though I've got a ton of friends on Facebook. I've got like 2,100 friends on Facebook. And I pretty much know 90% of the people on my Facebook list. But building out again from square, from from pretty much ground zero, trying to build a show, build a platform, build consistency, learn how to, all the techniques of lighting and sound and timing. Uh, that hasn't been, hasn't been easy, but for whatever reason, last week's 40 views on Thursday night on YouTube were more views than I've had in the previous three shows. But opposite that, on Facebook, on the Monday nights, these Monday nights, like right now, where I, I do this community brain dump, I'm getting an average of 525 views. So Dan, if you're watching, I'm supporting your hat, brother. There's at least 525 people to see the hat. Thanks for the hat. Um, so we've done 2,100 views of the previous four videos on Monday night. So this community brain dump, this Monday night session has been a really big win for me. More than anything, it's been a win in that I've had so many people reach out to me. I've gotten so many more comments, direct messages, uh, just people reaching out and, uh, privately and saying, hey, Bobby, I really appreciate what you're doing. And then I'll, I'll dig a little bit deeper and say, okay, you know, tell me how this is working for you and your family. And I'm actually getting the feedback. So I'm really excited about that. Um, that's been great. So again, for those of you that are joining, I'm, I'm going to say it one time and be done. That was the feedback that I got. This is the community brain dump session. This is the behind the scenes where you get an opportunity to engage with me directly, ask any question you want related to math, math topics at home, how to help your children at home, and I'll also respond to comments and questions from the previous week right here, right here live on Facebook. I'm also using this time, based on the, the information that people are giving me, I'm using this time to help formulate and finalize the script for Thursday night's show. So if you didn't see last week's show, it was actually pretty good. Um, I had to talk 100 miles an hour, and I'm sorry, because it was a lot of content. It's a little bit of content, 
but there's a lot of information that I wanted to dump into the video in a very short amount of time. So literally when it was over, my students looked at me and my son looked at me and they were like, are you okay? I was like, yeah. They're like, are you drinking coffee? I was like, no, it's a Dr. Pepper because I was going 100 miles an hour trying to spit out everything I could into that video on Thursday because I really wanted a parent or some family somewhere in the world to watch that video and say, I know where to begin with my child. So if you didn't see last week's show, I'll do you a favor right now. So if you didn't see last week's show and you're watching this on Facebook after the fact, I'm going to go ahead and post post that link to the last week's show. So there's the link to last week's show. It was uh, basically covering three fundamentals that your children should know right off the bat, regardless of grade. So remember, if even for adult students, so I've, reached, I've had a couple of adult students reach out to me. They know that I've taught math GED at Tarrant County College in the past. They're struggling to pass the math exam to get their GED to move on to that next level of their life. And they reached out to me and I said, hey, watch last week's video because those fundamentals are not just for elementary school children, okay? Do not be fooled into thinking that if, uh, just because it's a fundamental math element that you need to learn, that that has any bearing on how old you are or what level you're at in your life, it has no bearing on that. The whole point of going to school, the whole point of learning something is to actually obtain that knowledge to better your overall life. So last week's show, I talked about um, your multiples, what people call the, the times table. Hey, Jane. Hey, Jane. Um, what people call the times table. I hate the term, but everyone knows what that is, right? So I, I mentioned in last week's show that every child, every student, adult student or child, needs to know their base fundamentals, your multiples of 1 through 15. What that means is you need to know your times tables 1 through 15. Easy. Ones, you already know them. Tens, you should know them. But you want to be able to go up to 15. I also showed, if you watch the video, I gave, it's just a one sheet. And it also shows you that diagonally, if you're looking at your multiples chart, you've got your perfect squares or your square roots. So uh, as an example, you know, 25 is the square root of 5. So if you know your multiples of 5, then you know that 5, 2 times is 25. Then you now know the square root, the perfect square of 25 is 5. So last week's show, I pretty much touched on some, some fundamental things that people should know. And I actually had one parent reach out to me. And I'm not going to, if you reach out to me privately, I'm not going to put you on blast. But I had one family reach out to me and say, hey, we actually needed that because we really want to start somewhere with my family. We didn't know where to begin. They had two kids. And I said, watch that video. And they, they reached back out to me on Facebook. And I'm like, hey, we're doing it. So kudos to that family that reached out to me. Kudos to you and your family for taking it serious. Um, good job, Chris, on your 11s. Brother, hit me up next week. Hey, hit me up next week. I want to make sure you can get to your 12s. Um, so, so that's the good news. Got lots of feedback on that video, even though it didn't have a, a ton of views. We're not there yet, right? But my mission is to do 100 videos on YouTube this year. Half of them will be the Monday night sessions that I do right now. So that's kind of an uh, insight into what we did last week. Um, I thought it was a good show. And overall on Facebook, these Monday night shows, this community brain dump that I'm doing, where I give people a chance to post some comments or ask me some questions live. I see Dan, I see Rob, thank you Rob. Um, thanks Dan again. Um, for any questions that you have related to something that I might have taught on Thursday night or an element you'd like to see me talk about, this has become the great place because last week's video we got 552 views. So I had 552 views of last Monday's video and then four, almost five, almost six, and then 500 again. So the good news is um, for the past four videos, we've had 2,100 views of content that I'm sharing with people. And my goal, again, there's 51 million families in the United States, uh, 51 million children between um, pre-K and 12th grade in the public school system in America, 51 million. So hell, if I could touch 1% of that, um, that would be really great for me. So hello, Keith. That would be really great for me. So for those of you that have been watching these videos, joining me on Monday nights to kind of chime in, listen in, share comments. I'm asking you with all my heart, share this video when it's over um, because all of us know a family that is impacted by the difficulties that families are having in America with mathematics. I'm telling you, strike that conversation up anywhere you go with anyone and you'll see passion from parents at least. Um, most of it is, is 
a little bit of rage boiled over from some of the struggles at home, but share the video when you're done. Those of you who've been sharing every week, I love you. I really appreciate you. Um, so what else? So that was last week's show. I shared the link to it here on Facebook. Um, what else we got? So I also shared a pretty interesting quote. There's a quote I put out on Facebook, and I don't think I'm able to see it right now, but you got to go check it out. And it basically is a quote that talks about um, that children aren't really, uh, don't really hate math. They down for not knowing the math. And that's, that's, that's so true. I'm going to cheat and look on my phone because I think I can't look at it while on Facebook Live. But uh, I'll read the quote to you. It was sent by my friend Melissa. She sent it to me and privately and said, hey, I thought about you when I saw this video. So here's the quote. It said, children don't hate math. What they hate is being confused, intimidated, and embarrassed by math. With understanding comes passion, and with passion comes growth. A treasure is unlocked. The first part of that quote, boom, perfect, right? Children don't hate math. And if you think about it, all the children I work with, they don't really hate math. They tell me they do. But after spending some time with them and started really apply my approach to mathematics, it's always the same. They don't hate math. What people hate, what students hate, and what adult students hate is they hate feeling like they can't do the math. They hate feeling like they're incapable of doing the math. And they hate feeling like a failure. That's what people really hate. Math just happens to be the medium that's given them that negativity because they're basing their identity and their ability to be successful or not or quantify themselves as smart or intelligent by a grade on a, on a quiz or homework, etc. That has nothing to do with a child or student's ability to learn mathematics, which leads into the next topic. I posted two videos, one tonight and one uh, this past week about the common core. I think I've decided that I'm gonna start delving a little deeper into that. For the most part, all the years that I've been teaching, when students come to me or I had uh, uh, classes of students to work on, the first thing I tell them is forget what you've been taught. Because if you don't know it by the time you get to me, then you haven't been taught. You've been told, but you haven't been taught anything or you would have learned it before you got to me. When you walk away from me, I'm gonna teach you something. You're gonna know the math. And the Common Core, I really never pay attention to it. I've seen snippets of it. I had an opportunity once to go sit in a lecture. And I told this story before. It's kind of a funny story. I had the opportunity. This is a true story, by the way. I'm going to go ahead and just drop this one out there. I had the opportunity to sit in a classroom that was a one and a half hour long class. So just imagine, 90 minute long class. And it was filled with high school students around 11th grade. I was asked to sit in and watch someone teach linear equations at the common core level. And I'm going to tell you right now, if I'm lying, I'm dying. By the time I was done listening to that lecture, I was ADD. I'm already partially ADD, which just means my mind goes elsewhere because you're boring. By the time that person was done teaching that linear equation, fundamental linear equations, I'm talking about fundamental graph align give a t-chart or a table and, dis and, and plot points. I was so gone that I was just like vegged out and thinking about other things. And every student around me was just blank stares, right? So I posted a couple of those videos on the Common Core. Um, I even had a friend of mine today at work approach me about the Common Core. Um, even more than that, I was sitting with my boy Rob. We were working yesterday out in Alito, And one of my brothers from the Marine Corps called me up and he was like, Bobby. And I was like, yeah. And he's like, I saw that video you put on your Facebook. And I was like, yeah. He's like, is that a joke? I was like, no, that's not a joke. He's like, so that's a real thing? And I was like, yeah. So if you didn't see it, when you're done watching me, go back out to my wall. I posted a little snippet. And somebody made a video where one side of the video was a teacher teaching multiplication using Common Core. And on the other side, that person just did multiplication the way we learned back in the 80s, right? Just multiply, carry, add, get the answer. And they're done in seconds. On the other side, the, the other teacher is still explaining this box with the multiplication symbol and an addition symbol. And it's just, it's just whatever, right? And, by, and while they're doing that, the other person starts making coffee and talking to their dog. Three minutes. It took a whole three minutes. And now... I'm not going to degrade the three minute thing because it could take me 20 or 30 minutes to teach a math element. I don't put a time on it. It's just the idea that it took three minutes to explain 
this different method of teaching mathematics, which totally is total contrast to anything the parents of most of these children know, which adds to the bigger complexity of Common Core in America because it was hard enough. Think about it. If you grew up when I did, I was born in 75. If you grew up in the school in the 80s and the 90s, we didn't, we were, you were able to leverage your parents for help if your parents were phenomenal math students. If they weren't phenomenal math students, they had a belt and told you do your homework and you did your homework, right? At least our generation, and I'm not saying the generation before us didn't know, I'm saying our generation went through the 12 or 13 years of a standard method of teaching as an example, multiplication. We have children and grandchildren now. Some of us have grandchildren. I have a grandchild. We have children now. So we've all learned the same way collectively as a nation, right, of Generation Xers as an example. Now all of our children and our grandchildren are being taught Common Core, which already blows the kid away, right? Trust me, I teach math. It blows me away. Coming home to parents who learn math one way, trying to show the child who's learning math a different standardized way, and then you got a bigger clash and a bigger problem at home that a lot of parents are facing. And I'll just be candid. I faced it this weekend. One of my star students, one of my private students, is working on something that to me is simple. But she was struggling because she was taught away at school, which I'm sure it works. I'm not saying it doesn't work. I am saying that there are faster methods to do the same mathematics, and I'd rather do the better, faster, smarter way to give the child time to reach that moment of enlightenment where they say, ah, I know what we're doing now. Even me, after all these years of teaching, my student that I love, she was confused. She was struggling with me because I was trying to show her something with simplicity that she was trying to trust what's being taught at school. So this is part of the bigger issue that all of us are facing. And I'm a firm believer that to complain about something is just to be a brat. If you're just going to yell at the top of the roof and complain about the school system or complain about teachers or complain about students or complain about parents, to me, you're not offering any solution to the problem whatsoever. I'm doing everything I can not to do that because once upon a time I did that. I'm trying to bring a solution to the problem, to partner, to give parents a place to say, I have somebody that's just on the other side of a video. All I have to do is reach out to them in a message. All I have to do is contact them and if you message me, I'll call you. Someone that I can reach out to that has a different perspective that can help me take the time with my child to help my child at home, which in, then in turn helps the school system because it eases the burden on the teachers of being completely responsible for all the mathematical academic success of the child. And it's really hard when children are faced with ideas that they can't go get help. And that's a totally different topic because a lot of my parents have been told by the schools don't go get a tutor, stay with us and tutor. And my attitude has always been pretty simple. And I mean, no disrespect. I mean, no disrespect when I say this, but I used to say this when I worked in the school and I'm saying it before I worked in the school. And I'm saying it now that I don't work in the school. If my child goes to a class one hour a day, 45 minutes a day, five days a week, and is not getting the concept by the person who gets paid to teach it, I'm not sending my son to school or my daughter to school in the morning earlier or staying later with the same person that's teaching the same math the same way they've been teaching it Monday through Friday when they're not getting it. Because think about it, if they can learn it, the same thing you've been teaching in the evenings, then maybe we should have night school because it's not working in the daytime. So if you want to reach out and find somebody to help your child, do it. I keep telling everybody, eventually I'm going to teach. I'm going to talk about that tonight. Eventually I'm going to start posting my teaching material for people to access so I can bring a different perspective to teaching because I believe that I could do it. I think all the years that I've been doing it, and I've been successful in schools and with people who are struggling, I think I can bring something diff different to the table. But I'm telling you right now, 
Not everyone has access to a Bobby, right? But here's what you can do as a parent. Think about this. This is what you can do. You can partner up with another family and say, let me work with your child on Monday. You work with my child on Monday. Now, Bobby, you say, well, how's that really helping my child? If you're a parent, you know, children are more likely to listen to someone else than they are your own children. I know I had children. My sons, I love all my sons, but they don't all want to grow up to be mathematicians. They didn't want to do their math homework any more than any other child. Just because I taught it didn't mean that magically everything that was inside me mathematically or my desire to, to know mathematics or do mathematics, it didn't just automatically transpose over to my children. That's not how it really works. That's not how parenting works. Every child is different. But if you partner up with another family and you swap children or you say, tonight, let's meet at your place. I'll sit with Jenny. You sit with Tommy and we'll try to give them a different perspective. You're really helping those children. You're helping your child by giving them a different perspective because here's the ultimate thing. To the people who have asked me after I posted that Common Core video, people have asked me this very, very important question. They said, Bobby, how are you really helping? If the children are expected to do mathematics one way in school and you're teaching them how to do the same math a totally different way, how are you helping those children? That's a great logical question. It sounds completely rational, but I'm trying to offer a different approach, so here's my answer. My answer is this. If I use a different method to teach a child how to understand, gain that moment of enlightenment, not telling them what to do, but bringing them to a place where the light bulb goes off, where they start comprehending what we're doing, to where practice over and over again after that enlightenment, where they start gaining real understanding. They really say, now I get it. The aha moment, here's the catch. Once a child understands an element of math, from that moment on, if they truly understand the math, it doesn't matter what way, method, style, you want me to present my answer, if I already know the mathematics. It doesn't matter. Because if I can look at it and get the answer in my head, and I process it differently than what the teacher wanted, but the teacher asked me, put it in this format, I can put it in any format you want if I already know the math. And that's the key, is helping our children reach a level of enlightenment and understanding regardless of the method. Regardless, because there's not one way to get a math answer. There's not, I'm sorry, there's not. There's not, there's more than one way to get the same right answer repeatedly. If you can help your child or a child reach a place where they're like, I get it, now I understand that math, then they can present it in any different way that you need because that proves comprehension and bigger than that, that teaches that child how to think for themselves, which should be the ultimate goal of education, period, not little drones that do what they're told, but free thinking human beings that are gonna challenge a system to raise a society to another level. Just my two cents. So that's my thoughts on the whole Common Core. I'm gonna have more thoughts on Common Core. Big thank you to Melissa for sharing that quote. Those of you that shared that video with me, I really appreciate it. To the 525 of you average who've been watching me build this show on Monday nights in this community brained up session. I love you. Everyone who's watched, I really appreciate it if you share this video again. I want to reach 1%. I want to reach 1% of the 51 million children who are in pre-K through 12th grade in the public school, school system in America. That's my goal. So on that, I'll tell you two things before I, before I cut out for tonight. I've already been going 24 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up. So next week, so Thursday night, this week, Thursday night, that's the 28th, I think. What's today? 25th. So on Thursday, the 28th, I'm going to do my second part of fundamentals that every child should know. So if you caught last week's video, you're going to want to watch this week's video. This week, I'm going to talk about fractions, percents, and decimals. I'm going to give you about, I don't know, five to seven common fractions and a little bit of insight into those fractions that if your child understands those fractions, those five to seven fractions, they understand the percent correlation and they understand the decimal correlation, you're gonna save your children a lot of struggle later. 
I promise you. If you don't believe me, go out and start stop adults. On the, ask adults at work tomorrow. Ask them some general questions about some base fundamental fractions and see if you don't get blank stares or some excuse about how I wasn't good at math. Does it matter? The fractions I'm telling you are pretty much the fractions that are involved in every cell of every item that everybody runs out to buy. In my opinion, every child should know them. So that'll be part two this Thursday night at eight o'clock live on YouTube. I'd like to ask you to join me on YouTube. If you're not already a subscriber, I'd really like to ask you to subscribe. If you want notifications every time I post a video, which I'll also post this video, click the little notification bell and don't forget to subscribe. Last thing I want to leave you with before, I, before I'm done for the day is uh, I'll tell you kind of what's next. You know, for those of you who watched, um, who, who follow me on Instagram and Facebook, you see that I got a sponsor. So Fort Austin, um, Rob and Callie Brewer of Fort Austin have decided to sponsor my show. Uh, one, we went to school together. Uh, two, we're both in IT together. And Rob and Callie and his wife and his partners kind of believe in the whole uh, supporting STEM, supporting mathematics, supporting uh, a platform that encourages people to move forward mathematically. So they decided to sponsor me, which is really big deal for me to have a technical partner on the side saying, "Hey, we're we're really we we are willing to walk through this with you to help encourage you and offer technical support as needed as you grow." So with that, one of the things I want to share is I'm about to purchase one last piece of equipment that I've been waiting on, I've been waiting on the right piece of equipment to buy. As soon as I have that piece of equipment, I'm about to turn on the camera, set up the lights in a different place, set up the microphone, and I'm gonna start building the first of 15 courses that I'm gonna teach myself. So for those of you who've been asking, hey Bob, are you talking mathematics on Thursday nights on the show? You're talking mathematics on Monday nights on Facebook, but you're not really teaching any math. There's, there was a rhyme in, to the reason, okay? And the reason is I was getting to a place where I can use the platform, uh, use the show as a platform to establish my credibility outside my circle. I already have a wonderful circle in Tarrant County of families, at least 100 private families in the past decade plus that I've worked with that are my supporters who are, they're my living testimonials to my work, not to mention the hundreds of students I've worked with in the Fort Worth ISD in Tarrant County College. But I want to expand beyond that because, again, I want to serve a bigger purpose and I really want to help this country mathematically. So this year, starting in the next six weeks, I will begin filming the first of 15 courses that I will teach fundamental math elements, the fundamentals that I have found over the past decade to be the biggest struggle in America. In my personal opinion, if I give you my personal two cents, if everyone learned and mastered if every child, if every one of those 51 million children in the public school system understood and truly comprehended the 15 fundamental courses that I'm going to teach in the next year and a half, we wouldn't have a math problem in America. And then you wouldn't need me and you'd never see me again. So in my personal opinion, I want to work myself out of a job because I want people to say, I don't need a math tutor in America because we already understand mathematics in America. That's my long-term goal, to work myself out of a job. So very, very soon I will start finalizing the curriculum for the first course. Once I have that last piece of equipment, which I'll be getting very, very soon, I will start filming and editing that first course. And then anyone on the planet can buy my math courses. Um, speaking of which, I want to give a shout out. I don't know your name. I'm sorry, but I think I'm international now. <laughs> I'm, going to, I'm going to claim that tag. I, got my, I found out my first viewer was watching last week all the way from down under in Australia, which is pretty awesome. So I'll tell you right now, if my math, if my show is benefiting your two kids in Australia, don't be ashamed or afraid to send me a ticket. I'd love to visit you in Australia. So other than that, let me see if I got anything. Sandro's got a comment. I read an article discussing how we need to change the narrative about math literacy. We would never say reading is hard Big words confuse me at work or in a social setting. I agree. We fear the judgment of the stigma against difficulties with basic literacy. But it is socially acceptable to say I can't balance a checkbook or do basic math functions. Sanjo, you're absolutely right. It's called enumeracy, actually. Uh, there's actually a book called Enumeracy that I'm probably one of the only nerds to have bought it and read it that talks about how we don't understand base fundamental math skills 
and how much it hurts us in America. So good point. Uh, as always, I, I really appreciate you chiming in and sharing your two, two thought, uh, your, your thoughts. Uh, Dan says, can you talk a little bit about why my first grader is learning fractions so young? So Dan, if you're still watching this, um, I want to say this. If your child is already learning fractions, I'll just say this. If your child is learning some math element and you feel like it's before they should, roll with it a little bit. Okay, because in my opinion, we should be teaching some higher level math elements very, very early on. For instance, one of my biggest arguments, and I'm going to prove that some point this year. I'm going to prove it this year. I'm going to prove it this year. Linear equations is, you know, the graph with the line and the, the table with your X, Y and your coordinates and you're plotting your points to make the line. The linear equation, you know, the Y equals MX plus B. Everybody hates slope. Everybody hates slope. Everyone hates linear equations. It is the deal breaker for ninth grade algebra. I always tell my students and I tell my children, you want to see the, the dividing line for your students as they get into high school? Wait till they introduce linear equations and watch the, the class be split in half between those who will pass and those who will fail, who will be stuck in some kind of remedial class because we can't teach linear equations. So Dan, to your point, I believe we should be teaching fundamental linear equations, which is a ninth grade concept because it's true algebra. We should be teaching it in fifth grade because it's nothing more than connecting the dots. So if a child can connect the dots in third or fourth grade to make a picture, we should teach the base elements of linear equations as early as fifth grade because I did it when I was at Pasco High School. I took a group of fifth graders who were gonna go to sixth grade, I put them in a summer program with my 12th graders and gave them the same course curriculum over the summer. And at the end of the summer, gave every student the same 100 question test on base general fundamental algebra. And every student, my seniors and my fifth graders passed. In my opinion, some things we don't teach early enough, some things or some methods we teach way too early. But it's a good question. My, my answer for you is the younger you teach them. So Dan, if you watch, or anyone, but Dan, if you watch this Thursday's video where I'm going to talk about the elementary or the fundamental fractions that every child should know, which is the, uh, the fraction percent and decimal equivalent, they should know that. They, shouldn't, they should see one and understand the other forms automatically, I think as early as they can grasp it. And remember, adults speak an average of 5,000 words. Adults have an average vocabulary of 5,000 words. They say children in elementary school have the capacity to learn 10,000 new words a year. So in my opinion, the younger they are that they can absorb things, give it to them early because the ultimate goal is to prepare them for college level mathematics with higher level thinking. So I have no problem with that. If it's too complex for the child, I don't think we should punish them because not every child's ready for something but there are some fundamentals. But again, I'm not responsible for writing the curriculum in America. If I was, it would be totally different. A lot more cool, like me. And it wouldn't have the word common or core in it. <laughs> so good point. Uh, Rosa says, hey, Rosa, truth can't help my fifth grader. Arr. Well, keep watching my show. Keep following everything on YouTube so you can pick up some some tactics and some methods at home. You can help your fifth grade. If you go back and watch some of my older shows, you'll find out that I'm a, I'm a firm believer that the less you know about mathematics, the better math teacher you are. You just need to learn how to ask the right questions. And I talk about that on a lot of my videos. I'm gonna do it again in the future. But again, the Socratic method, asking questions to help your child bring them to a place of enlightenment, isn't telling them. So I think the show is show don't tell. So go out to my YouTube, YouTube channel and look for the episode called Show Don't Tell. Watch that, Rosa. Hit me back up and give me your comments and questions, okay? So to everyone else who joined, Tommy, Jane, uh, Shirley, uh, Jerry, Wendy. Hey, Wendy. Um, thanks, Dan. So everyone else, no questions, no more questions or comments. Again, I like to ask if you can. Um, Please go out there and share the video when you're done. My goal is to reach 1% of the 51 million children in the United States that are struggling with mathematics because I believe we're all struggling. 
If America is ranked 25th out of 28 nations in the world, I don't give a damn if your school is a top school and elitist school and everybody there gets a 100. We as a nation, we as one country, one family, one tribe, one nation, we're failing. So I'm a firm believer in Proverbs 327. The whole basis for all of my teaching, all of my coaching, all of my work, all of this stuff that I don't get paid, I get nothing for this, is based on Proverbs 327 that says, do not withhold good from others when it's in the power of your hand to give it to them. The very reason why I did not quit teaching mathematics is because I know when I go to bed at night, I know in my heart that there's a family out there somewhere in the planet that really wants to help their child or an adult student that really wants to learn something and they're not finding me. And I have it in me to help bring them to a place that can get them to the next grade get them into college, get them out of high school, get them to get their GED so that they can go, go on to college or pass college math to get out of college. I know that I can do that. I've been doing it for over a decade. So I'm a firm believer. So if you're one of those families and you're one of those people that you say, well, our school is perfect and it's phenomenal and we all get straight A's, awesome. Well, take the number of students in your school Multiply that times two and then tell every student to go help two other kids that are in a school that can't pass. Then you'll be doing a justice and then I would believe that you actually come from an amazing school. Otherwise, we're all in this together. It impacts everyone when we don't understand base fundamental mathematics. So those of you who watch, I really appreciate it. Be sure to catch me live on Thursday for the iTutor Math Show on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share it. Don't forget to tell your friends. And I appreciate you watching. Have a good night.